This is a Real Ghost Stories Online Extra. Hi, um, my name is Christina. I just recently, get literally yesterday, found your podcast thanks to a friend who recommended I call and tell you my story. And I did say stories, plural. Um, seems like my personal history from nine months old um, until recently has always been dipped in paranormal activity. Um, I have several, several stories, so I'm not going to tell them to you all now. If you're interested in them, please call me. Again, my name is Christina. It's 540-250-0273. The stories range from my nine-month-old, I don't recall, but my parents tell me a lot about me coming in and out of my crib at nine months old, and they don't know how it was happening. Um, all the way to my Wiccan grandmother, to the shadow man, to um, red eyes in a backyard that uh, I came face to face with when I was 11, um, paranormal dreams when I was five years old, so many, so many paranormal activities in my life. I'm going to probably tell you just really quickly, um, <clears throat> my um, most paranormal story, I was 16 years old and I was dating a guy, he was my high school sweetheart, and um, very courteous, nice young man. Um, <laughs> little did I know that he was really into the Necronomicon and um, satanic worship. <laughs> very odd for 16 years old. Yes, I understand that. But he wasn't a creepy person. He just had this odd fascination and this dark side of him. But he was actually a really nice guy. Anyhow, one day we're sitting on the couch watching television, and he begins to tell me his story of, uh, I know you guys know about the shadow man. And he begins to tell me about his shadow man who had been with him since infancy and that he would see him on a normal basis. Little did I know that that was going to lead me to see the shadow man. Um, and the experience that I had with the shadow man myself, um, even after we broke up and the experience that his girlfriend after me had, because she and I were friends, um, <laughs> uh, with the shadow man, it was an incredible story. Um, anyhow, like I said, he begins to tell me that he has this shadow man that's been with him since birth and he remembers seeing him over his crib. I, um, Later in life, began later during our relationship, began to to see the shadow man myself, but nothing terrifying. It wasn't like there was an evil entity to it; just terrifying. I would I would see um, I would see him um, in my bedroom. He uh, one day was sitting at the edge of my bed, and I remember waking up and seeing him, and he stood up. And he was at the foot of my bed, I meant to say. And um, I looked at him, and when he stood up, I could feel the bed move from where he was before. And um, so almost not shadow, it just almost like he was actual human form or, or person uh, behind the blackness. And he did have on the uh, the hat and, 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 the, and the long overcoat, um, the classic, I guess, shadow person. But... Um, I remember being so terrified that I couldn't scream. I finally gathered the, the nerve to, um, to to jump up and run to the bathroom that was to my right. I had a bathroom in my bedroom um, to run to my personal bathroom. And I, I, I ducked between the toilet and the, and the bathtub, and, and I crouched my, my knees up and, and dropped my head down, just afraid of what, what I was looking at in my bedroom. The next morning... Uh, my mom found me in the bathroom and asked me, what are you doing? Why are you, why, why are you sleeping there? And I couldn't explain. It, it was terrifying. And um, it was just an awful experience. But like I said, I, he didn't actually try to hurt me. He was just watching me sleep. Um, anyhow, I tell my boyfriend the next day, okay, I think your shadow person visited me last night, and it was quite terrifying. And he, he said that I, I needn't worry because he sent him to look after me and care for me and to protect me. Well, that was terrifying. 
And I said, I prefer that he does it. And he said, it's too late. You're a part of my life. And now he's a part of yours. Wow. Okay. So throughout um, time while we were dating, I would see him from time to time. If I was with girlfriends out wherever, I would see him underneath a, a street lamp or in a parking lot or wherever I was. He would be there. Not always, just occasionally he would be there watching me. We finally um, broke up about a year and a half later, and I started to date this other guy. And I remember on my very first date with him, he had dropped me back off at home, and he was standing facing the, the light that was at the end of the street, the traffic light, and I, I had my back to it, and his face just froze. And I looked at him and said, are you okay? And I turned around to see what he was looking at, and the shadow man was at the end of the street. Um, and he was terrified and it disappeared and he said what, 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 what was that he was so terrified I couldn't bring myself to tell him what I thought it was and I never did um, <clears throat> later on my, my little sister was um, really good friends with this young lady and her older sister was kind of a girl that I knew she um, started to date my ex-boyfriend and they didn't date long but when they broke up apparently it was a not very happy relationship she and I sat down and we're talking one day and she asked me um, can I ask you about something and I said of course you can and she said it might sound strange to you but I see a man who's shadow and he, he's terrifying and I started seeing him after he and I broke up and I don't know what to make of it and I said well he told me about this shadow man as well but he told me that I was to not worry about it because it was there to protect me. She said, no, it's different. It, it's not, I don't feel, I, I feel threatened by it. And I told her not to worry about it because he, he did that to me, to protect me. Um, later on, when he and I became friends again, I asked him about it. And he said, yes, it wasn't there to protect her. She had told me stories where her windows in her bedroom would get smashed in. And um, they actually, her parents had to replace the window twice. Um, things in her bedroom would get wrecked and destroyed. Um, and she actually even woke up one time with her beautiful long hair completely cut off. No one in the house did it. It seems as if her relationship with him being different than mine um, resulted in different results with this um, shadow person. Anyhow. He passed away. Um, we became friends later on in my 20s, and um, he passed away and from MS. And um, when he passed away, I stopped seeing, seeing the shadow person. But even while I was dating my current hu my husband now, the man who I'm married to, um, even when he and I were dating, I would see the shadow person. And I asked him about it. I said, you know, I see this shadow person, and at this point, I'm, I no longer live in Texas. I, I'm living in North Carolina. And we would talk on the phone, and I would tell him, I, I see this shadow person. He said, yeah, he's still with you. And we're friends, and, you know, um, he'll always be with you. But when he passed away, I never saw the shadow person again. Um, anyhow, that's that story. Um, so many other paranormal things have happened to me. And if you're interested in them, please give me a call. Thank you. If you want access to more Real Ghost Stories, become a premium subscriber to Real Ghost Stories online. Sign up now through Apple Podcasts and try it for three days free. Not on Apple? Go to patreon.com slash realghoststories or ghostpodcast.com.